Cyril, thank you for this beautiful film. Um, maybe as a first question, and this is in the, in the, in the north of Cameroon, um, how did you get access to the place and how did you get access to the people? Like your protagonists or the kids? Yeah. Uh, the, my journey in that space in the far north region of Cameroon I started in 2015. Uh, I was working for Le Cinema Numérique Ambulant, uh, where uh, my mission was to screen films in the remote uh, villages to um, population, mostly thematical films. So as I was working there, uh, I got close to... Um, some villages, and it was also uh, the same period where Boko Haram started to strike in Cameroon, because before there was just uh, in the Nigerian start of, of that space. And um, after that work, I went back there again uh, to continue the research, and uh, because I wanted to make a film um, um, mostly about people who decided to stay, who didn't, uh, 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 who didn't um, leave their different villages. So I went back there and I started like uh, developing uh, this project, but with another character. It, uh, it was the project I came here with uh, for uh, the residency. And I spent three years working uh, in, approaching this thematic but from the adult uh, perspective and um, one day as I was in the research I met uh, two brothers and that completely changed uh, the story the narrative and uh, what I wanted to say so <laughs> that's how I shifted completely from uh, the grown-up uh, perspective to the children perspective and um, you, I don't think you you spoke their language, did you? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I don't speak the, the the language that speaking in the film. You have three different uh, languages. Um, you have um, Kanuri, uh, Aousa, and Mandara. Oh, plus French, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that one. No, I, I was not speaking uh, the language, but mostly like uh, people speak French, but children no. So it was quite, um, yeah. It kind of shape uh, shape the way I I film, uh, and because I was just I was mostly. Uh, I, I will go back in little story. I, I went there on the, um, during the scouting. Mm, I had a DOP, so uh, we went on the field. Two, I went on the field two times with the um, the DOP, but uh, I was frustrated because there was a lot of stuff that was uh, lost. Uh, uh, and uh, after that, I just I decided to to take the camera and film myself and be close. So what I was doing with uh, the children, I was like asking them to talk about maybe school or uh, something, anything else, but I didn't have the idea on how or, or how they was putting that. But I was just sure that there was something happening there and I just focused in uh, their expression to capture that, and I was mostly going for a very long take uh, to to let things happen. Most of the things I, I, I discovered was were after the transcription, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing, like uh, yeah, amazing. Are there any questions or comments? Now is your chance. Um, yeah, do we have a microphone? Yeah, but because the the people at the back will not hear I, you. I can, because I'm not seeing the light. Is we, we have a we have a mic, I think, huh, yeah. Falk? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can sit here because no. of the light. Yeah, the place, that, I can yeah. I can see. If you don't mind. Yeah, that's better because then we can <laughs> see you. Yeah. Then we can see you. Now it's better. <laughs> no. Okay. I. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Super. Um, talking about your young protagonists, about the kids, when you met them first, were they very open from the very beginning when you were try, uh, beginning to shoot them? And I think that kids are always very curious. So did they also want to take the camera and film themselves or what was their reaction to being sh shot? So, um, when, when I first arrived there, I, I, I mostly um, spent time with adults and uh, children, they was calling me madam. <laughs> So that was quite difficult because when you have a posture before that, no one ever called me madam. So <laughs> there was this already this barrier between them and me. I was madam, and there was um, shield. There was the children, but um, I went to them. I went. Uh, I went towards them, and I started playing. There was a. Uh, this is not hard. What is this madame playing with, <laughs> with children? So, uh, and then when I opened up and went uh, towards them and was doing any stupid game they was doing, they started uh, interacting with me and they was curious about my camera and even my phone, everything, the sound equipment. They wanted to know about everything. So this is how we kind of establish uh, a, a relationship and uh, the funny thing is, since um, we were not speaking the same language, when I was, uh, I had a trans, a trans uh, somebody who was translating, uh, and the thing was, it, when they started speaking, it was saying, so sharing what they were, it, it was directing the saying like, um, this is stupid, don't say that. It's not. And I was like, no, I just asked you to, to tell them, uh, to ask them something. Don't don't say so what um what they was saying. So that's how to to tell them that I was rolling. I was saying yalla, <laughs> and to cut it was push push push. So that's how I work with them. But it was they they found that like uh, very funny how I, I was not speaking their language, but we were finding a common way of uh, communicating, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah, uh, in the middle and then over there. If you could hand over the, the mic, that would be perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I was very impressed by the children and um, uh, even more impressed when I uh, when I heard about the um, way you set them in scene and um, looking at the village um, in total, I am um, uh, astonished that the male part of the population doesn't appear very much. There's the soldiers, there's one or two teachers, there's a few guys strolling about with donkeys. Um, was it a problem to contact them or did they not exist in the village or did they not exist in the film because they didn't want to be there? So, um, the, the thing is like, it's, it's a very um, patriarchal and conservative uh, society. So people are living in caste. Uh, you have uh, women and children and then you have the men. Most of the time, what men are doing is what you show in three or four shots. So those are, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was, yeah. I mean, as far as I was filming, there are always so men lying on the, uh, <laughs> on the carpet. Uh, under the, the on the sh shade, waiting for women uh, to cook and serve them. That's the kind of dream life I would like to have. Right? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why, um, since the beginning, uh, I was just um, let's say I was more attracted to the life because that also is is another subject. is is very big subject. How uh, uh, 
the relationship with between men and women and children in that space. So I didn't want to to open um, that that box. So I I stayed with uh, uh, children and women. How did you manage to to like in the fairly towards the end of the film? Um, the mother talks about her relationship to her husband who has died who, or who was killed. Um, how did you manage to get her to open up? Yeah, the thing is, like, um, mostly um, in, in the process of grieving, because pe people are just uh, so, uh, you are seeing every day people dying, uh, around you that you don't have time to even reflect about your your own uh, grief, and that was also something I I really learned uh, while working with uh, um, Falta Moda. So I I was the first time um, uh, I asked her that question, of course, to the the um, uh, Falta. Uh, when she said that she didn't want to talk about, uh, I I felt because I I wasn't but I felt in in uh, uh, body language that uh, it was something bothering her and I cut the camera and I I didn't ask her um, until the end when she decided to to open up um, by herself so that was like it's at that time that I realized. And the process of uh, bringing the camera there, uh, talking with children, uh, step by step, push certain people to really uh, uh, go back, dive into their memories to uh, to grieve properly and to move forward. And that's something I, I never uh, imagined that it could I could have that that kind of impact by just bringing the camera in, in that space. Uh, I've seen you. Uh, the first question was there, and then uh, you. Um, congratulations for the movie, first of all. Uh, I also have the question of um, I'm, I was curious what happened to those two boys that um, you are showing most of the time um, wandering around, and I was wondering, do do you know if they found their parents? What happened to them? Because uh, that wasn't quite clear at the end. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could um, give us a few infos on that. So. Um, when we was shooting, like in the editing, people might think that is kind of a trick uh, to 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 um, to let people uh, learn that they they pass they pass away and then later no that really it was for you it's just fifteen minutes between the moment they said they are dead until the moment you discover they are not for me it took me six to eight months to realize that they were still alive and that was very very harsh for me so um, this their story is that nigerian uh they are coming from Niger when they escaped the first village uh where they uh, find the shelter was kolofata kolofata is in the, the cameroon side and people is only this uh ephemeral bari um uh, border you have people are speaking the same language from Cameroon to Niger in that zone or to Chad. So uh, when they arrived there, they always wanted they, they they miss home, and as they are growing, the 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 notion of home be, become like a illusion, something they they wanted to all uh, onto. They always wanted to find their their parents, and as they was tired of. Uh, having good answers from Red Cross and everyone was looking for them. So they, 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 ran, they, they ran away, they went back to Nigeria. But the thing is they are growing up and uh, um, government, uh, we don't have any social uh, service in Cameroon, in that zone to, to take care of uh, uh, children who have that kind of trauma. So when they went back, uh, when they came back to Cameroon after uh, running away, instead of accepting them, uh, the the government uh, sent them back to to Nigeria because it's easy to 
to send back the problem to uh, Niger than to to receive them, and that happened so quickly that I, I didn't have time to react. So since um, even before I had the last shooting in August 2022. We are still with the, uh, the 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 teacher sending people in Nigeria, so we are still looking for them to 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 bring them back to Cameroon. It's going to be a very long long search, but I, I'm not giving up. Uh, I'm in contact with um, uh, Monsieur Lamine, the teacher, because that's somebody that really helped me helped me a lot in 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 communication or in relationship with the population and parents or even children so he's still doing that we are still doing that and he didn't finish with with the film so yeah. a, I'll, I'll jump uh. can i also ask a question <laughs> thank you for this beautiful shot and very close relation to the to the people thank you very much that you took us into their world, which is really precious. Um, how often have you been there for shooting or have you stayed for a longer time, just once? No, probably not, because you just mentioned it. And the second question would be, um, how long have the military been there or is are they still there or how is that organized for the protection of the village? Mm. Yeah, uh, I've been going there in and out since uh, 2017. And uh, in the beginning, like I was saying uh, bef uh, before, it's a very patriarchal society. I needed to 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 gain the trust of uh, the village people. So what I, I would do, I started going there with no team, no, no equipment, just uh, going purpose of researching. I went there as a woman wearing traditional clothes, like the one you will see um, Falta Moda wearing, and just being the 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 girl, uh, the women that uh, she's not a villager, but she's still a woman. So that was the, the character. And then I, I got close, the, the chief, he accepted me in his house where the the, the two brothers was living. So when the chief, the chief uh, accepted me, the, the, the uh, Monsieur Lamine accepted me. So the, the village kind of, they, they accepted me. And after I, I, I broke the camera and when I brought the camera, it shifted. I was still the women, but a woman with a camera. So that's how um, uh, uh, the relationship from the women and the women of the camera with the camera may help me to 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 make the film. So I spent I went there in 2018 after the the, uh, the residency here. And then in 2019, in 2020, and in 2021, two times. Um, and last time, my last shooting took place in August, uh, August, September 2022. Yeah, so I was always going there, uh, uh, living like uh, I will go for a very long time. Uh, anyway, I was I was not paid. <laughs> we 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 suffer a lot to have finance. So for me, I was like, I'm going there w w to spend more long time. But I, I I was just trying to be more secretive about my movement because it was still and it's still a very dangerous place. Uh, talking about the military, they, they set uh, up a camp there in. Uh, 2016, um, and they are still there actually patrolling because uh, 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 Boko Haram strikes still present. They, they haven't um, uh, left the, the, the village. So just to s tell you how dangerous that zone was, I was not entering the village before 7 a.m. and I was not leaving the village after 5 p.m. And all the night sh shooting you are seeing there, I, I was not telling when I'm going to sleep in the village. It was last last moment thing where I will inform the, the military that uh, I'm going to uh, leave uh, to, to sleep in the village and they will 
uh, make a security. So it, it's, it's, it was <laughs> it was really really. I was afraid, uh, mostly afraid about my team, because I I was I mean it's, it was <laughs> it's my project and I was bringing people there to to work with me, and I was afraid that something terrible might might happen to them. So the story like uh, um. Kolofata is a very strategic village. Uh, it's a village where you have a lot of Cameroonian elites, like um, uh, some ambassador of Cam uh, uh, representing Cameroon abroad or in France or all over. Most of them, they are coming from that village. Our Ministry of Justice is coming from, from that village. Even the chief now, uh, he was kidnapped. And after they release him, he moved out. He is now working for the United Nations. So it is, it's a village that was also easy target for, uh, for the terrorists because every time there was, there was attacking the village, they could have a lot of stuff, uh, cattle, money, everything. They, they, they could, they could, uh, it was easy for them to find there. And it, it's become with time more dangerous because um, in the beginning, it was the ideological fight, but with the military from Cameroon, Nigeria, Chad, Niger, coming together to, to block their movement from one border to another, it became a fight for survival because all the necessity products, they were cut from that. When they're striking, they're striking to kill. It's kill or to be killed. To, 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 uh, that's why um, f uh, f children or People they don't go far away from the village uh, to to for the, the with the cattle because they might not come back. Yeah. There was another question in the yeah. middle here somewhere. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you for this really wonderful film. Um, especially uh, two things. So the, so first a comment and then a question. Um, I I, th I was really amazed how um, how well you managed to capture the beauty in the images, like you had really poetic images that then were contrasted by the violence and that made the film even more uh, powerful and strong. And I think it, it really shows well how uh, dangerous it is to live there and like the constant danger could really be felt. Um, and then you, but then you also put the hope in maybe especially in the figure of this young girl who really like for me, she was like, hope all throughout the film. Um, so my question, this was like, it's, I'm really like in awe <laughs> how, how you managed to do that. My question goes, how did you manage to get permission to film the special forces? Because as far as I understood, it's like you, in Cameroon, you're not allowed to get close to a cam with a camera to anything military, but you close, you film them from really f close up. How did you manage? So, um uh, yeah, you have to thank my back my background as a lawyer. I'm not <laughs> I'm not putting a camera nowhere without authorization. So before, like uh, weeks before, every time weeks before I went on the ground, I will um I will ask I will ask the uh, the our Cameroonian producer to I will harass him not ask I will harass him until he get the permission to shoot from our Ministry of Culture, and once I wasn't stopping there. Once he had he has uh, that. Uh, a permission. I will ask him to send that to the governor service uh, at the far north region, saying that. I am coming there to film, and that he must send that to uh, all the um, prefecture, sous prefecture, and uh, <laughs> and the military camp. So before I arrive, they were aware that I'm there, and when I arrive, the first thing I will do is to go to all those shifts to say hello to them. I'm there, and I'm very very weak women. I need your protection. I need your help to make this film happen. Uh, you know, I'm just filming kids and I am doing nothing that can harm you. But it, that was like, yes, yeah, fine. But I did that like with two, three colonels and this one, it was like lock, the lock factor. I find this one that really accepted me to to come to, to his camp and, and film them. And 
2021. So he was a new colonel and he's a mellow man. He loved reading, he loved films. <laughs> and he was also, he has a good chef. We were going there once a week. I mean, it was a pretest for me because I wanted to eat there. I was going there <laughs> with my team once a week to make a debrief on the situation and everything. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, um, so in a former life, Syria was a lawyer. Yeah, so she... Uh, but uh, maybe, uh, Syria, you can say, what made you change career? Why did you become a filmmaker? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, I always wanted to speak out, uh, speak out for the voiceless, but I was very idealist with the law, and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, have that. Um, yeah, I mean, I could have have like very. Uh, successful career but I, I was I wasn't going to defend the voiceless but, but people who have more more money so it's just shifting and continuing the, the narrative but with image and sound to tell stories that matter for me yeah so that's, that's why I should. So I think, Sarah, that's um, also what you said before, finding this image. I think it's really important that you, as a Cameroonian woman, um, has, has made this film, basically. Um, and it's not someone from the West coming to make a film about children in Cameroon. I don't think they would have even managed because, uh, um, yeah. So I, I just want to say, because this um, makes me a little bit teary, I'm sorry. <laughs> This film started off um, as a completely different film. Cyril was here. I was one of the mentors for the film. And I'm very, very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. um, Thank you for coming. Thank you for asking all these questions. I'm sure that Cyril will be outside if you, have, uh, if you want to speak to her further. Um, please remember the film is, um, is nominated for the Kino Kino Audience Award by um, B.A. and Breisat. You can vote for it when you leave the cinema. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>